Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. And we're going to pick up where we left off from the last Tailwind episode. Just for the sake of time, we'll drop these pieces in. And you won't really see anything going on here unless we add something inside of the button. So I'm going to type in, you know, let's go. And I'm going to just do an exclamation point. I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to jump back over to the actual visualization. And nothing button about this is happening right now. We have the cursor changing to the pointing cursor and everything else is just looks like text. So where this becomes, you know, looking like a button, we start to add the appropriate classes and then we style this. Okay. So just for, you know, just doing the button semantics and stuff like that, I'd like to make it type button because it is a button, even though we know it's a button, but we're just going to like, you know, do, put the appropriate type in. And then we want this to be inline block for this button. Okay. We're going to set the PY, which is the padding. We're going to set it to three. And then we're also going to give it a PX value. So left and right inside of this button, we're going to set the values to six. That's a great number. It's going to be W full. So we want this to take the full length of its button container. So we want it to be as long as possible, depending on the words. And before we get to like the uppercase values and all that stuff, I'm going to set the BG to, let's say, I think it was a yellow color. So we'll just do BG and we'll set it to yellow and Tailwind has some arbitrary colors and we'll just go with 400 just to kind of give you guys an idea about this. And as we can see, we have the button. So this is the PY or sorry, the PX value, you know, that gives it that spacing and the PY value that gives it that. And the text is just, you know, lowercase, but in our Example, we set the text to uppercase. So we're going to set it to uppercase. So now those will be large letters. We're going to set the font. We want it to be bold. We want it to be just a little bit thicker there. Uh, we want the height of this to be around 10. I would like the letting to be around four. And let me just give it a quick look. Actually, you know, we don't even need this because the height will be dependent on the button. So we'll just say letting is set to four. I think when we hover, so we're going to have this hover class. When we hover over on this button, I would like the button to be uh, BG red and it'll be this value. So let's just take a quick peek at that right now and we'll give it a refresh. Now the button's in uppercase. When we hover, it's red. Uh, you can do all sorts of, uh, you know, interesting things. You could make it, you know, rounded medium if you wanted it to do something like that. And then it rounds the corners. But for now, in our design, it's actually just, you know, we're going to leave it to what it actually is. Okay. Yeah, let's make the font. We'll make it sans as well. Okay. So I'm just changing the font style here. And we will like this font to be text and we want it to be small. So we'll leave it at that. And I think I'll set the text to the neutral color. So I'll say text uh, neutral. And see, these are the neutral values, you know, it's from like white to like, you know, a dark black. I guess I would like a little darker, so somewhere like to say 900. Okay, so there we go. And then we'll refresh that. So that's what it is when it's yellow. And when we hover on this, we want the text value to change to be lighter. So it's dark when it's just here by default. So if we say hover, and then we can set the text to white. So when I hover over this now, this text value will be white and this is the dark value. So looking good. Next up will be the anchor tag that kind of looks like a button. Now, if you wanted to make it look like a button, you could realistically, you could apply this whole class here. You could just throw it in here. Let's do that and see what we got. All right, so if we save this out, there it is. But at the end of the day, instead of using a grid, let's say we did remove this grid gap here and we did flex, and then we double check over here. So now we have this, these two buttons, they're literally side by side. And then we could say, we're gonna set the SpaceX value to, let's say two, okay? And then we refresh this, there we go. And then we can get back into our original design that we did, we laid it out, we can make this smaller, make it not full. We can make this, uh, let's say this button, instead of having it full, we make it like 50 you know, and then we do the same thing for the other one. So I've taken the anchor tag and I've turned it into, you know, a button, you know, we can make this one 64 or something or whatever, or you make them the same values. What I'm trying to do here is if you wanted the original design, you can go like this and just have them side by side, put the appropriate text in here, but notice that this is an anchor tag and this is the button. 
So we're not going to follow our original layout. I'm going to modify it a little bit because I like the other one a little bit better. So we're just going to jump back to what it was, um, stick with our design and make it work exactly how we designed it. I found that just aesthetically looking at this, I, I like the other modification better. It's totally up to you guys. So within the actual value here in the anchor, I typed in like learn more. And once again, I won't go over everything here. We kind of cover some of this stuff. I think I have uppercase set to, there we go, underline. So that's the other thing. So to give it like, you know, kind of some um, functionality for this an anchor, it's a button, but it's an anchor. I kind of put this underline here. I made it the full width. I gave it the height of 10, the letting, the text, no borders. I didn't want it to have any um, text decorations or things like that. I added, you know, my own, which is right here. So on hover, I want it to be underlined if we save that you know, we're back where we started. So kind of looking okay, but not quite there yet. The thing that was missing from this was we created an SVG, okay? This wasn't in the actual spec, but right here, we'll paste this in. And I got this SVG and this came from the hero icons uh, library. And I was just able to go there and put it in the appropriate spot. So notice how it's on the opposite side like it's literally not where we intended it for it to be what we can do there we can go to the svg icon and we'll place to learn more here and that should just put it on the other side okay so learn more here and the spacing after the learn more is set up so this is what we want so at the end of the day this is the full thing and we have the responsive design we've added this we've kind of replicated our design we took what we had originally and I showed you how to do like the button side by side if you wanted to do that. But you know, things change sometimes and you have a different approach and you just want to be able to change it. And Tailwind CSS makes it very easy to kind of do those adjustments on the fly and kind of see how these things work and then pick if you wanted to, for whatever reason, have some alteration on this. So don't forget to like, subscribe, let me know your thoughts below. Hit the notification bell. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care until next time.